Hey, how's it going, everybody? This is your boy Tweak here, back again with another video, another little update, lads. My hair is, in fact, growing back a little bit faster each and every day. We're going to get back to the old style eventually. But moving on to more exciting things, and the reason why you clicked on this video in the first place is because I am currently on a quest to make Interchange great again. Yes, you heard me. Make Interchange great again. If you guys saw my map tier list video, I rated Interchange very low because I think the map needs some massive love. And I think a lot of stuff needs to be changed about the map. I also have some ideas along with chat here, recording this live on stream. And chat came up with some really great ideas. If you have any suggestions of your own, leave them in the comments down below. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on these, as this is, you know, a community thing where we're making suggestions. And lads, if you end up enjoying the video, please make sure to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment down below, and all that lovely stuff. So guys, with all that being said, let's get into it. So, the first idea that I had is because this wipe, more than any other wipe ever, have people been complaining about Killa. Now, Killa has a very, very low spawn chance, as some would lead you to believe. However, guys, when you are not on the quest where you have to kill him, he will show up in every single one of your raids to fist you, as has been my experience with him since I reset my account. So, low spawn chance, he can spawn an idea, he can spawn an Ollie, he can spawn outside Kiba, he can spawn in a billion different places, he can spawn in Goshan and the whole underground car park and everything. So, pain in the ass to find him. Now, what if we made it so that there was a chance that we could control how Killa spawns in? So, this leads me back to one of the uh, podcasts with BSG, where they were saying that when you open Kiba, Killa will rush you, okay? So, this has been something that's, you know, said years ago on a podcast, and that when you open the door, like, raiders would spawn uh, to defend Kiba, but that unfortunately never ended up happening. So, what if, when you turn the power on and you open Kiba, now, if Killa hasn't spawned on the map, there would be a chance that he can spawn in 11SR, which is his room downstairs in the basement, past the concrete ramp, over to the left by that little yellow minibus that you have to mark for Ragman. So, what if there was a chance that when you open Kiba, Killa would spawn in there, and he would spawn with a couple of raiders to like act as his bodyguards to make the you know make it a little bit more difficult they would push up and they would hold kiba and you would have to try and fight them off and get out with them i don't know what the spawn chance would be this is just an idea that i had and i just thought it would be kind of cool also one concern was when you open kiba it automatically opens the door down below well i think what should happen is when he opens the door and he walks out the door just closes behind them. That way you still have to go swipe the switch upstairs in order to open the extract for you to use. It's not like you get two keys for one. You buy Kiba keys and then that room will always be open for you. So that was one idea that I had that I thought would be pretty cool. Uh, he could come with or without the Raiders. This was just a suggestion. And I just thought it'd be a cool idea and another way to potentially farm Killa a little bit easier for those people going for the tracksuit because it's an incredibly frustrating process. So, lads... Upstairs loot on Interchange definitely needs a bit of a rework. There is definitely not much stuff up there. And the majority of the loot is all downstairs and it's in the three main stores and it's in the tech stores. And all the loot is very concentrated in like the center of the mall when you're excluding the three main stores. So what if there was a big loot reshuffle made and some of the stores upstairs on Interchange were just swapped out. Like some of the stores that just have nothing in them were swapped out for other stores and some of the loot was moved around the map a little bit to make it so everybody isn't bum rushing the same location in order to get certain items. Upstairs, some of the ideas, we had a food store that would take some of the food from Goshan so everything isn't concentrated in Goshan and you can go up there and maybe get like higher tier food and then you'd have a hardware store that would spawn your industrial stuff and like tools and things like that for your hideout. Maybe even a store that only sells weapon attachments but not guns so it'd be a little bit different from Kiba. It would be like for, you know, Gucciing out your gun, maybe high-end weapon parts and then something like an auto shop that would sell, you know, things like electric motors and like other bits and bobs and industrial tech loot and all that kind of stuff. Now, somebody from my chat, I think it was Kin Kare, said, uh, what about a game shop that spawns random streamer items? Now, I thought this idea was really, really cool, so I'm going to mention it here. Shoutouts to Kin Kare for coming up with this idea. A video game store, i.e. a GameStop or something like that, that just sells random streamer items. So when you go in there, there's a chance that you can get random different streamer items and also PC parts. So you can get, like, graphics cards and CPU fans and all this other crap that you would need uh, for, like, a gaming PC or something like that. One thing in order to kind of, like, balance the looting a little bit and maybe make these rooms a little bit better without just making them open to everybody is that when the power is turned on, these rooms can be opened, right? 
but you need to get the shutter keys in order to open the different stores. So it would be a case of you walk up, you put in the key, and then the shutter opens up, and then you can go in and loot it. So it's not just straightforward. You just walk in there, grab everything, and leave. You'd have to go and find the different keys for all the different shutters on the different stores that would be upstairs. That would make it so that at least there's more keys to be used on interchange that actually have use, unlike the quest keys that just get used once and thrown away. Or, you know, like Ultra Med and like Kiba being like the two main ones along with Emercom, but people don't ever really loot Emercom all that much. I think having more keys on interchange could be cool and some more like contested, quote unquote, high end loot areas. Okay, so that's the idea with the shutter keys and all the different stores upstairs out of the way. Now I'm going to talk about the tech stores. So everybody knows on interchange, you run to the tech stores. That's basically the main loot on the map. You leave, right? A lot of people do this. A lot of people pistol run it. A lot of people kind of like naked run these in order to, you know, just grab some high value tech items and then leave. I hate that they're all so close together. So German is the only one that's over by Mantis. But what most people will do is they'll go to Rasmussen. Then they'll go to Texo and then they'll go to Tech Light, and then they'll dip, right? What if we were to move Rasmussen and move Texo and maybe put Tech Light on the opposite side of the map so it's by idea? Maybe actually leave Texo where it is and then move Rasmussen maybe over to where like opposite Emercom or something like that so that all of the tech loot isn't just concentrated in one tiny little portion of the map because they're some of the most traveled areas in the map. That's where everybody, like for the most part, unless you're questing, always goes to grab some loot, see if you can find some graphics cards, some Tetrises, and other rare and expensive tech loot. So I think it would be good for the map if some of this stuff was moved, just to balance out where players want to go, rather than having it all basically isolated into one tiny little portion of the map. If you guys ever been in the mall and the raid's kind of dead, and the loot is just not that good to the point where you actually want to run all the way to power station to turn on the power so that you can open Kiba and open Ultra Med. Like, People don't do that. People are like, oh, power's not on, whatever. I'm just going to leave because it's not worth your time, right? What if there was an alternate power switch inside the mall, maybe in the basement somewhere in a maintenance room uh, where there was a backup emergency generator? You needed a key to get into this room. And when you turn on the backup emergency generator, it would power the mall for five minutes. So you'd have to run around really quickly and do all your looting or open the doors before the power runs out. You might need to bring a fuel can into the room with you in order to power the generator so you don't have to run all of the way over to the power station. Maybe there is just a special loot can that spawns on the map. It can be in a certain set of fixed locations and maybe you have to go find that fuel can in order to power it. So that could be kind of cool. It'd be like a little scavenger hunt on interchange as well. And another source of, you know, power for the mall so that you can open the locked power doors. The next thing I have here, 21 WS. Nobody ever loots this. The loot in there isn't really all that great. It's a pain in the ass to get to. And I would just love to see something changed about this along with the other container that's over on the power side of the map that you need to actually go into 11SR in order to open it to pull the switch. Guys, I never really thought about this before, but when you walk into 11SR, that's your extract. So you've run upstairs, you've swiped the key in the urinal, you run all the way back down the escalators, probably with a bag full of loot. You run into that room and then you think, huh, let me pull this switch and run to the other side of the map all the way away from my extracts just to loot a couple of weapon attachments. Not really, you know, it's not really making a whole lot of sense to me anymore. I would love to see something changed about this, maybe make it a little bit more enticing, potentially move the container a little bit closer to the extract room, maybe remove the loot from the extract itself and maybe move it into this container so they would actually be more worthwhile running over there, maybe move the rare spawns over there and the moonshine spawns and stuff like that. So you gotta go over there check that and then run back to your extract maybe while your teammate's holding it or something like that. I don't really know. But if you guys have ideas on this, I'd love to hear them because I can't really figure out how to like move these or balance them. But I just feel like something kind of needs to be changed. One other thing as well, uh, potentially another extract, which is on the complete opposite side of the railway, which is where the highway basically leads to could be good. This would help reduce the amount of extract campers at Ebercom. And it would reduce the kind of friction, I guess, when you're leaving, going to either railway or to Emercom or going to the car extract or, you know, taking no backpack or, you know, having to turn the power on, swipe the switch, go down, take 11SR out. 
So if you guys have any ideas for any cool extracts on Interchange, I'm all ears. I'd love to hear the suggestions down in the comments. I, I thought of this as well, but this is just something I kind of came up with on the spot and it, it probably wouldn't need to be done. It, it seems a little bit overkill, but I was thinking we remove the scabs from the power station and instead of scabs there, we add raiders. Now, one unique thing that these raiders could do is while they're outside patrolling and holding down the power station, there's a chance that they can just go in, hit the switch and then move inside and move towards Kiba where they will station themselves outside Kiba to defend it. And maybe they'll actually open the door and they'll actually go in there and they'll, I don't know, like hold the room from the inside. So you have to like clear the raiders out of it in order to actually get into Kiba. So they would walk up the ramp through idea, walk through the mall, fighting anybody on the way and then walk down the hallway to Kiba and then they would have positions where they would set up and hold it. So I thought that could be kind of cool. Another like somewhat dynamic event in Tarkov where it's like if you see raiders at the power station, you'd be like, oh, cool. Okay, I'm going to go set up and hold Kiba and wait for them to walk in and like wait for them to open the door and then I can ambush them and kill the raiders and then go in and grab the Kiba loot and dip out. It's kind of like a like a dynamic event within the game. We've always wanted more dynamic events in Tarkov where, you know, we don't know if certain things are going to happen or not. And I think that could just be a cool mechanic for the map in general. <laughs> one other note I have written down here, Ultramed. Why does this room even exist? Ultramed for me has been one of the worst rooms that got hit the hardest in a massive nerf. Every time I go into this room, I either just get a couple of Salawas or like maybe a couple of injectors if I'm lucky. For the price of the room key and the pain in the ass it is to get there and fight there in one of the most high traffic areas of the map, it is just not worth looting. Uh, the loot in there is really bad and maybe one in every 40 times you loot it, you might get a lead X. I think that Ultra Med needs to be moved somewhere else on the mall, maybe a more central upstairs area, change it into a big pharmacy room. And when you open the door, you go in there, there's other maybe locked rooms in there that lead to like the back pharmacy or like the back lab or something like that, where you actually have to get another key. Similar to how uh, on labs, the way red key card room works is you swipe red card, the room opens, you go in there, there's another cage in the back of it that you need another key to open that has other loot in there. So maybe the main room only has Salawas and meds and stuff like that. But when you open the two back rooms, maybe there's a chance at getting things that can craft lead X's, lead X's themselves, defibrillators, uh, ophthalmoscopes and other rare loot like that. So I thought that could be a cool idea. Just completely rework Ultramed, put it somewhere else, make it the biggest pharmacy on the map. And when you go in there, you've got extra rooms that you can open with other keys that you're going to have to find. Unpopular opinion, I think the Kiba loot is actually good for the price of the key. The Kiba key right now is absolutely dog cheap. Basically, everybody can get their hands on it without even doing Gunsmith because the other key that you get from Gunsmith is actually sold on the flea market for a very low price as well. So Kiba loot, it's okay. It's definitely worth the price of the key. You're going to make your money back on one or two runs, to be honest with you. Like, it, unless you get really, really unlucky, you're going to make your money back in three raids if you hit Kiba back to back. If you get, you know, lucky-ish, you'll make it back on one. But for the most part, I think you'd probably make it back in two raids, to be honest with you. I think Kiba is actually okay at the moment. I would still like to see it buffed because it is one of the coolest rooms in the game. It's a giant gun store and it's really, really cool. And I just think it kind of needs some love, man. It's kind of one of the key points on Interchange, but it's usually like quite lackluster and not, you know, not the greatest. It's very, very inconsistent. Two of the last things I'm going to mention here, and I'm sure people have been screaming this since this, the video started. The lighting. Yes, lads, I know. The lighting sucks. I'm pretty sure BSG knows. Everybody in the community knows that the lighting on Interchange absolutely sucks, and it needs a rework. I just didn't want to talk about it at the start of this because it's boring. Hopefully they fix it soon, so fingers crossed they do. One other thing as well that needs to change on escalators with regards to sound is why can I only hear people coming up the escalator when they're on the last step of it? I can't tell you guys how many times I've been sitting in tech light and then all of a sudden I hear dunk dunk and that's it. And they're upstairs. I haven't heard anything else. It is one of the loudest sounds you can make in Tarkov. But I can only hear the last fucking step that they make before they make it to the top of the escalator. It needs to be changed to where you can hear it from the bottom all the way up at the top of the tech store or upstairs or whatever area you're in so you can at least hear people coming up escalators. That is a big change that needs to happen. It is very upsetting when you die to somebody that you basically can't hear coming up an escalator. So, lads, that is my little rant over. I hope you guys liked the suggestions. Leave a like, leave a comment, leave your suggestions down below. Make sure to subscribe if you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out, my dudes.